Hey. Okay, come on. We might as well do this. My 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 earpiece said. pack went out, and now Wait, it wasn't even plugged in. Did you unplug no, it? No, no, it was plugged in. Oh, okay. But I but the tape helps it. I think camera one might be a little start. off its kilter. Ever see too. David Letterman do this? <laughs> I'm not comparing myself to David Letterman. I'm just saying. Jeez. Is that it? And then here's the problem. That is what there she said. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez, Kelly. Hey, wait. Am I right that camera one is a little crooked? I think it's... <laughs> what? Is it me? No, no, no. Just slant. Like slant a little bit. Table. It's the tripod. It's no, the no, no, table. it's the tripod. How could the, the table... table? Oh. How could the table... Welcome to the Sam Livecast. Oh, it's this way. Oh, sorry. <laughs> hey, man. <laughs> A little okay. to the left, a little to the <laughs> right. All right, there you go. Awkward start. Hello, and welcome to the Sam Livecast. Hey, it's a it's Monday. It's a Monday. Yeah, there you what go. Is th- that has nothing to... What? Monday. What do you mean? Mondays are... are not spo- we're supposed to be all revved up after not being here for three days, all excited, working in here early, perfecting every shot, angle, checking batteries in the mic packs, all that stuff. Apparently, none of that shit happened. <laughs> but whatever. What do I care? Super Bowl this weekend. Who watched? I watched. Everybody? Yeah. Yep. Steve watched. Yep. Did you like the game? It actually was a decent was game. It's kind of boring, but it was a good. It's exactly right. It was kind of boring. It went down to the end, though. Yeah. That was. It was good. So low scoring. Giants fans were heckling uh, Giselle Bunchin about Brady's loss, and she turned to a companion and said, "Oh, I like this quote." You have to catch the ball when you're supposed to catch the ball. My husband cannot fucking throw the ball and catch the ball at the same time. I can't believe they dropped the ball so many times. Wow. Wow. Oh, was that the expletive used? Yeah. I didn't even yeah, 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 yeah. And there's a video of that. It's kind of hard to hear. But jeez Louise. You know what, though? In her defense, it was yes, a frustrating was loss. In her defense, she's hot. <laughs> That's, <laughs> That's the only that. defense for that. Also, it wasn't like meant... You know, to be in public, how pissed. many times have we, like, said the, kind of basically the same thing after, like, a really frustrating speech, you know? Yeah, I'm defending her. because I know, like, but <laughs> you know what? But she was taking it out on his teammates. Yeah, that, that was not cool. How did somebody that was, get that quote? You I go think, look for it, you'll find it. No, but, I mean, did it? somebody just overhear it? I no, there was a was camera there. rolling. Yeah. Oh. Was there. Like, yeah. Apparently, she didn't realize the camera was oh, rolling. Oh, wait, her mouth? Like, no, you hear, read the, her lips? you hear the words. Oh, my God, wow. Right. Yeah. You hear the words. Well, she... Probably isn't the nicest person in the world. I don't know. Why would you say that? Because she's a model? Wow, look who's stereotyping now. What? Come on, Lynn. Why would, you, why, would she, why would you say she's probably not the nicest person in the world? Defend that comment. Go. Oh, because of what she said. That wasn't a very nice thing to say to but someone. It wasn't. I mean, it's... He's got a point. There, it's terrible sportsmanship to, like, criticize your opponent. Yeah. Let alone your own... Your own team. team. I mean, right. so... Mm-hmm. Just saying. This comes on the heels of her text to friends uh, last week asking them to pray for Tom so he'd yeah. have a good game. But here's the thing. She was mad, and she understandably mad. so. And Wes Walker was, uh, quote-unquote, inconsolable. So Apparently, as, as uh, Tom Brady walked up to her after the game, he saw her the first time, he mouthed, I guess they couldn't hear it. He said, I'm sorry. Really? I'm sorry for not winning the game. Oh. That's a oh weird relationship. God. I mean, geez, his girl, his wife makes more money than him, and he can't win a Super Bowl. Oh, <laughs> but he's a good-looking guy. He is, yep. isn't he? I don't know any guys that don't think he's a good-looking guy. No. Steve, you think he's a good-looking guy? Sure. <laughs> oh, you sure. can say you don't think Tom Brady's a good-looking guy. Yeah, he's a good-looking guy. There you go. That's all I wanted. To. <laughs> hey, so on Facebook, yeah, Ron Davis already asked a question. I think we're going to talk about what yeah. was Sam's favorite commercial. Mm-hmm. Oh, uh, I'll tell you what my favorite commercial was. Um, it was the one where the dog killed the cat. Yeah. The that one was, yeah, that the was good. That was a funny commercial. I thought generally overall the commercials weren't all that great this no. time. No, really? there was no, no great standouts. What? Well, I really like the Clint Eastwood one, as cheesy it might sound. No, no, no. I it's like the Clint Chry- Eastwood one, too. One, you right? know what's interesting, yeah. though? I thought that was a commercial for the car business in the United States in general. I didn't realize so it was a, a Chrysler ad. Which until I thought the end. they I thought which they did I, which, a nice I, which made me like it even more. Yes, yeah. But I have liked that whole, you know, imported from Detroit campaign. Sure, yeah. I really liked the M&M one. At yeah, Masters. that's what that set it great. all off. Yeah, yeah, it was great. Dude, the American auto industry is booming. That's doing well. Yeah. <laughs> it is. Speaking of autos, <laughs> you laughing at me, mom? Who? Speaking of autos, who I'm bought his too. first? Who bought his first car yesterday? 
What? He's contributing to the boom. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Max. Yeah. Had his first dealership experience. Good Max, has, Max said to me today, thanks a lot for the advice. I go, what? He goes, not tell him, tell him not spend the time to tell me how it works out at the dealership and how the whole thing goes down and blah, blah. I go, I didn't know you were buying a car yesterday. I, that's <laughs> what, I just can't believe that you sent me down there like that without proper warning. Mother effort. I didn't send you down there. You went down there by yourself. It was not me. <laughs> but, still, but now you know how horrifying it can be. It, it can is be, yeah. horrifying. How could, I just don't understand how you could ever let me not you live say in this that house one without more knowing time. that. I don't know how I failed as a father. For fathers that have uh, children that are getting to the point where they may buy a car someday, please do your do yourselves and them a favor. I missed this opportunity with you, Max. I'm sorry, I failed. You guys didn't I have the talk. Sit it's the kids pretty- down and have the talk. Oh, well, can I tell about our first talk? Wait, Go sit them down and have the talk about what the car buying experience is like. Because if you're not ready for it, mm. it could be a slap in the face with no, a wet I- fish. So that's what I wanted to say. Um, if you're not a relatively confident person, I guess you're not. You're not able to. Uh, it's difficult. If if you're not co- a confident well, person, they will screw you. Yeah. Not screw you, but they will scare you into just signing something without knowing what to do. Here's what you should. Here's. I mean, you took somebody with you, which is one of the first rules. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, Jordan was <laughs> nowhere near prepared either. Yeah, yeah, unfortunately, it was my younger brother. You should have right. your younger brother. You should have told Jordan to just do this every time you start getting close to signing a piece of paper or looking like you're going to say yes. Grab your arm and say, "Max, we have to go. This is not right." Uh, that would have been that would have been his his role. No, I'm telling you, I would have like broken down in tears if I hadn't had my brother with me. So. At any time, did you say? Do you know who I am? Did you, did you use your line, your patented line? Uh, you are the worst. <laughs> Do you know who I am? I'm proud of you, honey. No, yeah, but I was I was thinking about starting the whole process over again when I had the cooking guy with me because that would probably be beneficial. In no, San Diego. you know what? I've tried that for years. It's it actually is a detriment. <laughs> here's, you go here's to the what back happens. of the line. Nothing, nothing comes from being the family. You don't get a better deal. They think somehow because I'm on TV that I have more money than regular people and I don't because this kind of TV doesn't really pay. And I just end up uh, giving signature autographs and giving away books and shit if I happen to have any Right, we go in the hole, trust me. Yeah. Yeah. So it's a drag. Can can I share my car buying experience? Yes. Mm -hmm. And like how easy it was? Yes. So this is probably the exact opposite experience that Max had. I basically just went online to a forum that sells like that specialized in my car, checked what the average price that the new car is selling for, called up a fleet dealer or a dealer, um, but called the fleet manager does internet sales and everything and right. said, you know, what is the price of this car? And they're like, Oh, we do this price. I'm like, well, I saw this price. I'm like, okay, fine. We'll do that one. And then I called a bunch of dealers. They get said the same thing. Finally just picked the dealer that gave me the most money for my trade and went in there, signed the papers and left. See, you know what? Uh, my dad used to, um, he would phone four dealerships. He'd go look at cars, find out exactly the model and the accessories and shit that he wanted. Mm-hmm. He would call four sales managers and say, this is who I am. I'm going to buy this car tomorrow. Here's what I want. I'm calling three other places. Call me back. Tell me what the price is. He'd go and he'd buy a car. Yeah, oh, yeah super so simple. They had no but he would, but he would pay cash for it, or he'd have the loan figured out already. So yeah. there was none of that last minute back and forth, jack and jackassing around kind of shit. Mm-hmm. Can I tell Max? Would you be horrified if I told the story of when I had the real talk no, with you? I don't care. Okay. Uh, I think it happens to every young boy. So, so the moment, the, but yeah, but you're, <laughs> but you're, you're <laughs> one comment. <laughs> so there's a there's a Mexican restaurant near us. It's called Tio Leo's. It's not particularly good Mexican. Food. It's like a chain restaurant. It's like it's like bad chain food. It got replaced by Olive Garden. Oh no, it replaced. No, it Olive replaced Garden. an Olive. Yeah, it went from bad Italian food to bad Mexican food. But but uh, when it was time to have the the talk with you, I asked you. I said, let's go. I don't think you knew it was coming. I just said, hey, let's you and me. We'll go have dinner. Whatever. Mm-hmm. And where do you want to go? And you pick Tio Leo. It's so <laughs> weird. Turns out Tio Leo's was the place that I took uh, Jordan as well. I want it to be a tradition. And then Zach, I felt like I had to get to him quick. We were on a plane coming back from Boston. <laughs> 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 I had to talk with him on the plane. Uh, so we go to Tio Leo's and we're sitting across the table from each other. 
and I start down the path of, of the conversation. And now I feel like uh, somebody's just sat behind us, and I feel like I'm talking louder than I should. And I don't want to share this information <laughs> with just anybody because it's valuable information, and those people might not have known it. And I don't want to give up any secrets <laughs> by accident. So I say, come sit over here. So we're now sitting on the same side of the table, side by side. And, and I'm doing the whole thing, and you're just like this. You're just listening. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> You, you got nothing to say. Mm-hmm. And I go through the whole thing. And I'm, I'm being as graphic as I feel is important. <laughs> I'm giving you all the information I think you need to know at that time. I'm not leaving very much out, right? And I get to the end of it. And you're very quiet. And I say, do you have any questions? And you think for a second. Mm-hmm. It's the thing I love about you, man. You thought this through. And you go, Yes. And I go, what's your question? (laughs) (laughs) And you look at me and you say, how much comes out? (laughs) Just like that. How much comes out? Because, and I could, I mean, I don't know how how old you were, (laughs) but whatever age you were, I can see when I got to the part about the semen leaving the penis, I didn't quantify it. And in oh your 13, 14-year-old mind, it could have been it could have been a bucket full, it could have been like a fire hose. You needed to know how much was gonna come up. This is awkward for me. Okay, now, next to Max. now he's really red. I've never seen him that red. Do oh, you not man. remember that moment? I think I do. But, but I think it was a, a really well thought question. Hey, yeah. I covered everything. I didn't cover I'm a that. Thinker. You, you can see you would want to know that because yeah. you were going to have to be prepared for that at some point. Are you prepared for what I'm about to show you right now? Uh, whoa. <laughs> oh, God. Whoa. I don't want to see a gross picture, man. It is not gross at yeah. all. And yeah. It's a little crazy, though. Yeah. I want everybody to take a look at this. What? Who? Uh, is that why you were asking me about my hair can you spot a certain sam the cooking guy in there anybody and he's got his hand on some guy's way so wait no let's take a look you in the middle there he is in the middle he's holding hands with one guy and he's got his hand on the other there he is wait no take it easy for a sec there's his left hand he looks stoned (laughs) are you i was gonna ask are you stoned and there's his right hand oh what my god you should see Sam's face right now, everybody. I don't. <laughs> what talk did you have, Sam? I, I don't. Can you believe that? I, 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 I can't. <laughs> can you? The hell? Is that why you were asking me if I had long hair? Yep, exactly. You can you that? go back to that? I'm trying to. That's uh. That's like Camp Fatigue in 1973, Dad. So how old am I there? 14. Shit. I'll look at all that hair. Can you believe that? Okay, on my right, or, or to, on the right side of that picture, that's Bradley Shapiro. Mm-hmm. And that's the only Bradley kid I should get. <laughs> I don't know why oh, that's Bradley Shapiro. My God. Oh, but wait. my God. But wait, I'm Holy holding hands shit. with the other boy. Oh, my God. I don't know what all this is about. And you're all in the tightest shorts possible. Go back up. Let me see everybody else. All oh, the girls are back Christ. there. Can you Ew, believe that? Sam. The Look 70s. at the guy on the right. Wow. I can't believe how far up his thigh your hand is. You know what? Oh, it actually looks like, Andy, what the... it looks like Andy Gibb. Go back up to him. What's Andy? I don't know who Andy, Andy Gibb, Gibb is. From the Andy Gibb from the Bee Gees. He looks just like Andy Gibb. Wow, Sam. Talk. Okay, the sex talk where was the hell not the, awkward. That where, did you ha- where the hell did you get that? So Jilly Joffe yeah. sent that to me. Her parents dug that out of a, a box in their in their basement. And so I went to camp with them. Yep, you were there at the same. Are years. they in that picture? I don't think you should so. ask. You well, they must be. They're on the. They no. I think they were your counselors or something. No, you were. How four, old were her think, parents? Sam, how, Daddy, if you're fourteen, you? oh, you're you're fourteen. If you're fourteen, the counselors are like seventeen. So that's not. But that wait, crazy. go back to the picture. Look at the, the girl in the long sleeve black sweater thing with a super long collar. Mm-hmm. It's like she's got a, a hunk of wood up her back of her shirt. Look how it's like. Oh, she may have. Look how like stuffed up she is. Oh, those chicks were hot in those days, boy. 
So that's the this is at the camp that I went to. All my all the boys went to the same camp mm-hmm. I went to. Wow, what a roller coaster memory that was. Shoot. Yeah, so Julie's parents sent me this and the best part about it? Yeah. I don't I don't get that. Oh my I don't know God. what's going on there. I mean, I up his look, lie. Hey, I liked Bradley Shapiro, but not that much. That's awkward. I thought you'd like that. That's way awkward. Hey, hey, I hate to push you in so fast. Yeah, don't push me in yet. Hey, by the way, I got four minutes. Let me just say this. <laughs> Saturday night, we had dinner at uh, uh, Dolce. No, Friday night? What was the... Saturday night. Saturday night, uh, after Zach's uh, winter formal picture-taking session. All, a bunch of parents you know, went out for dinner. And, uh, we sat with two other couples. I uh, had a great time. I sat right beside... Um, Mike, who is an anesthesiologist, go, oh, a doctor. I have questions for a doctor. <laughs> First and foremost, the scrub question that oh, we talked yeah. about oh, last yeah, week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what he said? What did he say? No, they shouldn't be wearing scrubs. Really? Yeah. Wait, let's refresh everybody about the scrub question in case they're tuning mm-hmm. in. Today. My point was, when I see a doctor in scrubs in a supermarket, either early in the day, early morning, like he's going to work, or late in the day, like he's coming back from work, he shouldn't be in the scrubs. Because if he's going to work, he's getting supermarket and other people germs on his scrubs that he will then take to him to see potentially immune-compromised patients that don't need to have anything from the cheese aisle, the meat aisle, or the obnoxious guy that rubbed up against him at the (laughs) self-checkout, right? And if he's coming home... I don't want any of the diseases or germs or bacteria that he may that may have jumped onto his pants or his shirt or his shoes or whatever while he was operating or checking somebody or whatever. I don't want that in the supermarket. Either way, it's bad. So I told him about this, and he said, "No, I agree 100. percent They should not be wearing their scrubs in the." Uh, I thought he was coming back the, with some the, so like, legitimate why? reason. I know. So there's like no. No, he did, there's no. There's no why because they're lazy. Whoa. That's what it is. He goes, the only people that could have scrub-like clothing on might be uh, uh, nurses yeah. that don't deal with patients, that still wear that, you know, sit at the front of an office, phones, that kind of thing, phones, yeah. that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. He goes, that's okay. Hmm. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I just oh, read just Facebook. <laughs> Jeffrey writes, well, tonight's recipe involved chicken thighs. <laughs> <laughs> See? <laughs> that was worthy of a laugh out loud. It was pretty funny, actually. <laughs> and Becky writes, what happens at camp stays at camp. Yep, You're it does. Does. Yes, really. yes, it does. I don't really know what that was. <laughs> well, I do. I, don't I, I, I think it was just, your think about it. I was just steadying my hands. I was, doing, I was doing that thing where you start to, you know, you're bending down. You're balancing. No, that's not, a, that's not a balance. <laughs> that's not a balance? And then, like a... and then you were just holding his hand for, for leverage. Okay, I'm telling you. <laughs> me, go back. Me, Bradley, Bradley Shapiro. Me, Bradley Shapiro, and the kid with the Jufro did not have anything going on. I can tell you that right now. Dad, I just never, I've never seen you with hair like that. I love it. Uh, trust me, I love it too. And Sam, or Max, if you look like at Mark's posting, he just identified everybody and why Sam. Oh, there you go. Sam attended head. camp with the former Debbie Ole and now Debbie Joffe, Jilly's mom. Okay. <sighs> Debbie's one year younger than Sam and took then the Sam picture. And took this picture. That is so busy. Biz- the final night of camp. Oh. oh, you guys were like having a moment. David Superstein. That's who it is. Is the curly headed kid next to Sam. I love the last name Superstein, by the way. <laughs> yeah, that would be nice, huh? <laughs> yeah. Can you believe that, Dad? <sighs> it's nuts. That takes me way back. Oh, yeah. That takes me way back. Check this out. When Jordan went to that camp, he was lying on uh, his top bunk, right? A couple days after he gets there, and the, the, the roof of the cabins were fairly close uh, oh. on those side, those side bunks yep. as they peaked up. He's lying on his back, just doing one of these things, and he goes, what? And it says, Pam Davinsky loves Sammy Zion. Yeah. <laughs> I heard you telling me this. How cute is that? That's crazy. That That's from amazing. way back. Yeah. Way back. That's Those amazing. camp memories are great. What is yeah, that, like 1956? Yeah, shut up. Uh, wow. <laughs> okay, Dad, we got to cook. Paul we got to start our cooking. Okay. Uh, we got to cook. <laughs> I'll tell you why I'm calling Steve Paul Prudhomme in a minute. Yeah, whatever. 
Mm. It's true. Do you guys know who Paul Prudhomme is? No. Lynn? He's awesome. Wait, Lynn? No. Paul oh. Prudhomme. And Perhaps, maybe, ju maybe just the most well-known, well, not anymore. I think he's dead. Well, apparently. Uh, he made, uh, like, uh, Creole Louisiana cooking a big deal. Huh, and I say a big club. deal, I mean a big deal. He's a big man. Okay, we got to go cook something now. Let's go. All right, here's what we're making tonight. We're making something called a cheater paella. And do you know paella, the Spanish dish, mm -hmm. shrimp, mussels, that kind of thing? Made in a special pan. It's kind of a pain in the ass. I mean, I've never actually made it. I just <laughs> believe. And for purposes of what we're doing tonight, it's a huge pain in the ass. Because tonight is super simple. We're making a huge cheat, a uh, huge slow down, a cut of all that crazy work. By going my way. Yeah, normally it takes a long time, right? It takes a long time, yeah, yeah. But that's not what we're doing. So here's what we're doing. We're starting with these packs of Spanish rice. And all we're gonna do in the beginning is um, follow, at this point, we're merely following the directions to get this thing going. So we start with butter in a pan, and then we take this rice noodle combination stuff that's in here and put it in, get this packet out. Do you buy these rice things? These things are far popular in this family. I my kids, all, my kids always like them. There's a chicken one that they really like, and they're easy last minute things. You don't have to make everything yourself, but we do have to add some butter to this, so. Uh, I'm doubling this recipe so that it makes, uh, makes a bunch, right? So two tablespoons of butter, one, two, three, maybe one more. We melt this. And then uh, in here, it's just a simple matter of putting this rice nonsense in. As I say, you just follow the directions. In a large skillet, combine rice and butter, saute every medium heat until golden brown. And here's what this is. It's a combination of rice and noodles that you could just do yourself. In fact, we'll do that one night. I got an easy thing that I like to do. But for purposes of this recipe, we're just gonna use what they have already supplied because it's there. But here's the thing. I say, you know, you can take something and mix it with, yeah, you don't have to start from scratch. And I don't wanna sound like Sandra fucking Lee from that home, semi-homemade show. God, she annoys me. She annoys me so much. I find her so annoying. And I'm probably being a douche. And I don't mean to. And if you find me annoying, then say I'm annoying. I don't really care. But that one drives me insane. I find you annoying. Thank you. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Just kidding. Uh, I wish I was there for you, for your car, Max. <laughs> By the way, I have three sons. I've obviously done the sex talk three times. If you have children that you need that talk done for, and you're not comfortable doing it, Call me up. Yeah. Okay, we'll make a video. That's what we could do, Steve. Can you imagine uh, that? Yeah. A video. Yeah. That's actually pictures. pretty funny. It's actually a pretty funny idea, isn't it? Yeah. Kelly, do you think that would go anywhere? Sorry, I wasn't listening. Oh, <laughs> oh my God. God. Dad, Didn't hear any of that. Wait, but Dad. <laughs> Never mind. Yes? Nancy Laporte says, your red neck is red again. Oh, it is? Oh, yeah. yeah it it's is. pretty oh. bad right now. Oh, God. Oh. Look at that. That's flaming. Oh. Wow. All right. Here's what we have to do. we got to open up... Um, we got to open up these two cans because this recipe calls for, uh, oh no, 14 ounces. Oh yeah, I'm good. It calls for 14 ounces of uh, diced canned tomatoes. So I've got two because I'm doubling this recipe. And do you know about this, this, this thing? This can opener, this single arm can opener is genius for one reason and one reason only, but an important reason. Ready? So the lids come off, obviously. But then look, no sharp edges. You couldn't do that on a regular can. No. You cut the shit out of yourself. So we're browning this right now. That's the whole goal, is just browning. You see, look at here we're starting to get there. 
We're almost there. So we brown this, and as soon as it gets brown enough, we dump in two cups of water. So we need four and the tomatoes. Becky wants to know if you like anybody on the Food Network. Is there anybody? Uh, no, there is. I've already said I like Emeril. Uh, is that what I, was I say out loud that I don't like Rachel Ray, but I quite like Rachel Ray. I mean, you know, I'm just jealous of her success. I'm not crazy about Guy Fieri. I think Guy Fieri on Diners, Drive-Ins, and Dives is a great host. I mean, I think a lot of people find him a little obnoxious, some of the stuff he does, and I made fun of him in the Halloween show. But I think he's a great host for that. I think his cooking show is no good. I think he's not a good, you know, what he was, came to be for. He won that competition, and he was a cooking show host. I think he's a much better straight TV host, you know? That win it to minute. He does that show well, I think. I don't really watch it, but whatever. Oh, my God. I said your neck was flaming. Yeah. <laughs> and everybody's now making fun of you in that picture and the word flaming. <laughs> I don't care. What the... Look, I've been married for 25 years. 26. And Sam, what's his name? Is not dead, by the way. Paul Prudhomme? No, he's not dead. <laughs> Who said that? He's up and running. He's not up on anything. Somebody find pictures of Paul Prudhomme. he says he lost 130 pounds and he's not dead. That's he is? You didn't he did? Recognize him. Okay, check this out. All right, now I've got to do this. So we need, uh, we're doubling this recipe. So we've got this stuff that's all browned up here nice. So now this will go in. And it's going to make a lot of steam. But just deal with it. So four cups of water. The recipe's on the website, so if you want to go look, you can. And then the cans of tomatoes go in. But you'll see the magic part is going to come in a couple of minutes. Look at that. John went out and bought the champagne hibiscus flower things, and he sent a picture. Let's see. Of them on his. Uh, well, tell me when to look. I'm working. Right look. Semi. I'm doing it. John. Nice. Kubat. Nice. Does he like him? Yeah. I th I th he says he enjoyed it a lot. That's a great idea. That's a great idea. And by the way, let me just say the juice from those hibiscus flowers, uh, stirred. Uh, beaten in with some whipping cream would make some amazing uh, whipping cream. The mm -hmm. juice from those hibiscus flowers over top of some ice cream would make some really good ice cream. Hmm. Hey. There's all kinds of things you can do hey with Dad, it. Hey, Dad, is this your man on the screen? Uh, Not the, the one on the right. The one on the left is Dom DeLuise. Oh. Wait a minute. That, no, that? no, 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 no. That's not... I know Dom DeLuise looks like... Paul Prudhomme, but Sam, that's not the same guy in those pictures. No, it's no, not. Don, Don, it's Look left. at the mouth. The mouth is totally different. Dom DeLuise is on the left. Paul oh, Prudhomme is on weird. the right. Crazy. That's funny, huh? All fat exactly people don't look same. alike. Why aren't those you going to say do. something like that? Oh, I'm just saying. Kelly. Steve. What? We're not talking about fat people. Oh. We're talking about people that happen to be heavy. <laughs> okay, as soon as this boils... I didn't look at the instructions. I think I just turn it down. Cover and reduce. Uh, so let me get my foil. I don't have a lid for this big pan, so I'm going to do this. One, twice. It's like a ghetto lid. I like it. <laughs> Almost there. So how high heat do you have that, Dad? Uh, I, well, I've got this on high. I'm just trying to bring it to a boil. Okay. As soon as it happens, I'll turn it down, and then we'll be fine. Oh, shit. <laughs> I forgot these stupid things. Wow. The whole thing would have been very different. What, what is it? it? <laughs> it's the, the seasoning packs. Uh -huh. The salt packets. Apparently, people at home aren't paying attention to what I'm not doing over here. <laughs> Somebody should have told me. Okay. But then I'm supposed to be the guy with the answers here. So maybe they <laughs> thought I yeah, knew something true. they different, didn't. I can already smell it back here. You can? Oh, yeah. It smells pretty good. Yeah. yeah. But it'll get better. So I'm just trying to mix it in, obviously. We're almost there. 
I'll take this opportunity to chat about one of our sponsors. Donovan's uh, Steak and Chop House and now Donovan's Prime Seafood, where we will go Thursday night. We finally figured it out. Do we agree on Thursday night? After yeah. the live cast? However Kelly will be, Kelly oh, will be out, of out of town. That's why we're Boys going. Will play. <laughs> we'll go. Right. Boys downtown, we'll have some oysters. Is that good? Nice. <laughs> <laughs> you clowns in the back, are you in or no? Yeah. All right, good. Uh, clowns, both of you. I'm the only clown back here. That's true. You're the only one there right now. Yeah, so we're going to do that. Uh, Donovan's Prime Seafood, downtown San Diego, Fifth Avenue, has now added a oyster bar. And we are, oyst I'm a huge oyster fan. I'll eat them anyway. Broiled with cheese and spinach, plain in, a sh in the shell, plain in a shooter with a little tequila and um, mm -hmm. Bloody Mary stuff. By the way, my Bloody Mary's yesterday for Super Bowl Sunday that Kelly and I Oh, I saw the picture. Morning. I'm going to pull picture? it up right now. Pull up the picture. Boy, were they good. Will you take a driver Thursday, please? Yeah. We'll figure out how to get ourselves back up here because we're going to want to go down there and just chill a bit. Okay, so now that it starts to boil, wow. I'm going to turn it way down just to a simmer. And I'm going to put my, my, who called it a ghetto? Your ghetto lid, Steve. Wait till you see the Bloody Mary. There we go. Oh, I got it right here. You ready? All right, let's go sit down. Oh, yeah. the best. Oh. Oh, can we? Uh, yeah, oh, that's a beautiful oh, Bloody. Oh, God. Look at it. Look at it. That Celery. Nice looking Bloody. Celery, the asparagus, uh, marinated asparagus in there, and the bacon. Bacon. Uh, yeah. The bacon. bacon. That's a secret that's of a Bloody brilliant. Mary. Right that's I a good Bloody Mary. I got three pieces on mine. No, a good crispy piece of bacon in there. Oh. Yeah, so but good. here's the thing. It's Clamato juice that I use. I don't use uh, tomato. I use Komodo okay. because it's, it's just no, better. Here's the one thing that I would have to disagree with you on that. What? I like it. I like the tomato juice a little bit thicker. The Komodo is very watery. Your mom is very watery. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to think of something to say too. <laughs> but it's about flavor. You don't like, so that's cool. Maybe, no, it's so not maybe, I guess so. Maybe so, you could go half and half. No, that's what I, was, I guess it's not all uh, just about flavor to me. It's about texture too. I don't know why I just went like that. Texture. <laughs> well, texture. I like it. That's my. F I think the flavor of a Kamado juice. The is only way that could have been better is to have a shrimp. A skewer in there, grilled the grilled shrimp thing Absolutely. in there, right? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. How good would mm -hmm. oysters be on that if you liked oysters? Well, that's the, that's what I'm saying. I'm saying at Donovan's. I don't know if uh, Donovan's Prime Seafood has, if they do shooters, but if they don't, we'll be doing them. We'll be suggesting that we try them on Thursday night. And who's going to be the responsible adult if I'm not there? To get me home? Just period. Me. With the three of you down there me. shooting. I won't be drinking. Oyst oh, thank you, Steve. Yeah, but you also <laughs> yeah, live but you down, live down there. there. You're not going to want to bring me so home. So Sam's going to be in the guest room. Oh, we got a big, nice sofa. <laughs> I, oh, have a, I have a 17-year-old that has to have <laughs> parent... That, responsibility that has to have his second dinner made for him every single <laughs> night you know oh what? you are so bitter <laughs> god i was never treated to that well you didn't whatever by oh, the way yeah. so anyway that's our thursday night um my mom is 87 joy my mom's one of my mom's closest friends sally roadberg is 90 90 years old wow and furious that she has now been rejected three times in a row for her renewal of her driver's license. <laughs> My mom's no telling me way. this story. I adore Sally Roadberg. I adore her. I think she's just a really lovely woman. My mom's friends are all lovely. Apparently, it was as Sally Roadberg is telling my mom this story about getting rejected for the third time. And now she's got to, this is in Canada, so now she's got to appeal to like the main court of driver's licenseville or whatever it is <laughs> as this 90 year old sweet woman is recounting the tale of how she was rejected again for her driver's license she says referring to the guy that failed her he's a fucking asshole <laughs> direct quote really? direct quote <laughs> sally roberg said the inspector the the tester what do you call those guys the uh the instructor. Yeah. The instructor, instructor. Yeah. was a fucking asshole. Wow. She's 90. 
Yeah. Though I think at 90, you're entitled to say any goddamn thing you want. No, does anybody wonder where Sam got his bad language from? <laughs> from Sally Rodberg, <laughs> apparently. Honestly. Well, the from words Sally still Rodeberg. came out of your mom. Hey, when are we going to get Grandma to Skype with us? <laughs> oh, I don't know. Yeah, so I sent Grandma um, I a camera did. for yep. her computer mm-hmm. that nobody can f- hook up for her. Whoa, 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 whoa. Sorry. Sorry, this <laughs> Are you ready for this, Sam? In D.C., Erica's had a Bloody Mary that has crispy pork belly on top. Oh. Yeah. I don't even want to know about that. We were just talking about pork belly. Because Lynn had uh, what he said was what? Best breakfast thing you've ever had? Yeah. it's At Solus up in Encinitas? No, no, it wasn't Encinitas. Oh, uh, Urban Solus downtown. Pork belly Benedict. Amazing. Absolutely stunning. Yeah. If we, you like that, I got a place for you in New York, Lynn. That's amazing. All right, dude. Next time I'm in New York, I'm calling you up. Yep. I had Urban Solace. I had Urban Solace the other night. Max oh, yeah. ate at Urban Solace. Oh, yeah. Some and duck you had, What was that beer you like? Procrastinator? Oh, yeah. It was so good. Is, Is that what it was? Procrastinator? procrastinator? No, I no. So. That was just your nickname for Max. <laughs> <laughs> well, that too. But I think he actually chose a Procrastinator. <laughs> <laughs> I can't remember what it was called. Uh, you sent me a picture. I think it was. I'm going to look. Carry on. Procrastinator with a Q, I think. It was? Yeah. It was so good. So Friday in Philadelphia was the Wing Bowl. Do you guys know what the Wing Bowl is? Mm-mm. It sounds like a bowl of wings. It does sound oh. like a bowl of wings. It's like Super Bowl, but for wings. And it's a competition with professional eaters to see how many wings they can eat in 30 minutes. <laughs> and Kobayashi, notoriously famous uh, professional eater, won $20,000 because he ate the most wings. Anybody want to guess how many he ate in a half an hour? Oh, yes. Like pounds or? In a half an hour? Single wings, just single half chicken an hour? wings. I'd half say an hour? 250. 500. Oh, I, I don't even want to guess. Kel, any guess? 340. Guess, Mom. What do you mean? What do you mean, no? She's not listening. I'm sorry. Yeah, okay, I'm whatever. trying to get the beard. 1,200. She has no idea what we're talking, <laughs> okay. she has no idea what we're talking okay. about. Keep going. 337, Lynn read the article. No, I didn't. Does that, wait, go. If you wait, go back. Go back. See these pictures. Wait, one more. One more. Doesn't that look like Rachel Ray a little bit? This guy yeah. kind of does. It does. Yeah. Look at the face on that kid, on that guy. Ew, yuck. How, so how many? 337. 37. 337. And his style apparently was to scrunch all the meat down to the end and then lop it off in one bite. I love this shot. Oh, reflective sunglasses. There was another guy there whose style was to put the wing in his mouth and twist it and pull on, pull it out and it would come out clean. Wow. (laughs) I feel like this is dangerous. What if you got a bone stuck? I don't understand Kobayashi, how he does this. Kobayashi. Kobayashi changed the, the... the competitive eating world competitive eating world but he ch- particularly he changed that nathan's eating contest whoa because uh he's only 5'8 too look at him but he looks like he's like he's a jacked. muscle man he's yeah. jack he changed the competitive eating world with his style of breaking the hot dogs in half dipping them in water and then downing them that was his his creation yeah uh, yeah oh wait you is, he, is he the That's one awesome. that that w- was uh Cause controversy with the uh, Oscar Meyer content. No, no. Is it ringing a bell? Anybody? There's I one don't guy know. who. Uh, well, no, he was. Was the top. It's the guy. Nathan's contest. It's not Oscar. Oh, it was Meyer. the Nathan's contest. We'll make. Yeah. We'll just correct that. But so I think the last couple of years, Joey Chestnut, an American, has won. Yeah. Asian guy. Joey Chestnut. No, no. no. It was an Asian guy. Kobayashi. Like Joey but what would the controversy have been? I don't remember. He. He's controversial because he Somebody wins a lot. Somebody on Facebook knows. He, he was in the news uh, probably less than a year ago when it happened. Can I, I say know. something that it, yeah. I just remembered? Yeah. Are there sausages out on the barbecue? <laughs> what? Yeah. From yesterday. <laughs> what does Watch that mean? Watch this. Really? Sam made food yesterday and then i had these amazing chicken pesto sausages and i brought them out look at them, watch this 
He's going outside. He goes, I'll go cook the sausages for you, honey. This was at 3 o'clock. I just remembered them because I never ate them. Honestly, watch this. They were out there overnight. Oh, no. Oh, <laughs> yeah. oh that's a yes. Are them. those my sausages? <laughs> oh, I was so looking forward to them, too. I can't believe I forgot. It was the Bloody Marys yesterday. Jeez, you guys must have had a few cocktails. Well, I think they started at about 9.30 <laughs> with that Bloody Mary. Oh, my God, I'm so sad right now. I guess I shouldn't eat them, right? Not only are the... Uh, well, I'll let you decide. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Put those oh bad boys over God. here. Oh, my God. I can't believe we both forgot. <laughs> oh, what? Are not o- wait, not only are the look at it. Oh, oh, did you see oh, that? Yeah. Just see what are we looking at? Those wait, are not just only good Not only are stuff. the sausages Oh, look at that. Not only are the sausages finished. It's like a carcinogen. <laughs> but um so is the tank of propane that was out there. Oh, I guess. Cuz oh, that was yeah. Oh. Shit, kill. Now where am I going to get my sausages from? (laughs) Right, enough of the sausages. That's terrible. (laughs) They look so bad. How are we doing on the on the paella? We're fine. We got. uh, Did anybody hear my the thing go on? Ten seconds. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Wow! Look at that time. Check this out. So here's what happens at the halfway point. Do I need to come over? Yeah, you do. Uh, Sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I should have given you. Uh, advance warrant. Hey, Sam. Yeah, I'm hearing it. Uh, unzip your jacket, man. There you go. Oh, Just walk around like so that. so much better. I'm sorry. Uh, hey, um, so here's what we're doing. This is what makes this recipe super simple and easy, right? Look what I've got. I've got mussels. And I really dig mussels. Beautiful mussels, right? So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna take this rice, which is only halfway cooked. Come look and see what this checks out like at the halfway point. Right, so clearly it's still way too, way too liquidy to do anything with. It's not, I mean, so we're just gonna give it a little, a little stir. Jeez, it's looking amazing. It will so, but so far, the, it's only the pack, right? right. So it's, it's just a, rice aroni. Yeah. It's just rice aroni. That still looks really good. But here's the cool part, right? right. So now we'll take the mussels. Oh. And we're going to dump them in. You know, look, I'm all about easy. And this is going to be easy for us, right? And the shrimp. And you know what? I cannot believe that I just didn't wait one day to put the sausage in there. Because we usually do. Your mom puts the sausage in there. <laughs> Sam. So okay, the that's liquid, it. Uh, the liquid will cook it? Cook the shrimp? And the steam. The steam that's going to happen steam, here now, yeah. right? So now this is the whole goal, right? Now we just cover it back up again. And we should be now like like about seven minutes away. Ah, mother. Effort. Seven minutes away from that being ready. Really? That's it? Well, I hope. It always works out. I got a lot in there. We're going to see what happens. If it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. But I think it's going to work out. People are saying it should be a who eats this shit. This? Like burnt sausage. Oh, my no. goodness. I mean, oh, I would take yeah. a bite if I didn't think I'd get sick. Would I get sick from don't this? Don't do that. Don't. It smells absolutely 100% just like char. Do it. No. You want me to? No, don't do it. Do you see? <laughs> John, don't do it. Good thing it wasn't a grilling episode. Don't. Don't, I mean, you might don't get do sick. it. Yeah. You'll definitely get sick. How could you get sick from that? I'm sure any any bacteria is burned out of it by now. But it's been sitting outside for 24 hours. Guess you could call that a dick. More than 24 <laughs> hours, yeah. Don't do that. Well, do it, can Dad. you Just see how charred that thing is? Well, yeah. right. That's why you exactly. can't eat that. It's that's like eating terrible. a piece of charcoal, man. Yeah. So wait, did you never turn the heat off? No. Like no. the flames off? I left the gas on all night or however long it lasted. That was at 3 o'clock yesterday. <laughs> so three until seven. This something. should be a warning, a lesson to you people out there. Don't start really good Bloody Marys at 11 o'clock on Super Bowl Sunday. <laughs> because this is what you end up with. That should be a PSA. <laughs> Me Hi, and my I'm burnt Sa- sausages. Hi, I'm Sam the Cooking Learn Guy. Learn a lesson from this, folks. 
Don't play <laughs> games. I like it. Skip McKenzie says they look more like dog poop now. Oh, I agree. <laughs> yes. Let's go throw it. Hey, so I talked to uh, I talked. I talked to Woody today. Woody, the flair bartender that's going to be at Sam Live on February 18th. You think we could get a video of him? He's got to have something. There is stuff. There is there's stuff there. I'll try and find something. Lynn's in the works. Lynn's in the works. You know, what he, what, what's probably going to be there is going to be like his Guy Fieri thing. So Woody opened for Guy Fieri for his tour. And Woody's like super high energy and, and exciting and... So we're talking today, and I'm talking about what he needs. So Sam Live is February 18th, me on stage. I'm cooking. I'm telling stories. I'm doing the how I went from biotech to cooking on TV and showing the video bits of my life that go along with that, that really the t- my first demo, my Today Show, the, you know, that kind of stuff. And uh, my first time on TV. And um, Woody will open. Like, you know, like an entertainer would have somebody open it. Woody will open. So we're talking on the phone today and I go, Woody, you know, tell me the things that you need so we can make this good for you. And he goes, he's, you know, I can't do the Kiwi accent. Every time I try and do a New Zealand accent, I sound like an Aussie and I don't know how to differentiate the two. New Zealand. New Zealand. New Zealand. But anyway, but he's he's doing his, his talking and he goes, and I go, uh, he goes, we need something on the ground. I go, well, there's like floor on the ground. What do you need? He goes, I'm a bit uh, uh, splashy. Oh, God. <laughs> I go, splashy? He goes, we need something down there to, to catch the, you know, the, the liquid that's going to fall. Have they got some carpet or something? <laughs> go, carpet? We can get you some carpet, mate. I, I just imagine like just, he's just throwing like shit all over the place. It's uh, Woody's Liquid Kitchen. Oh God! Uh, so if you're looking, him. and you can see a pi- at least a picture of Woody, and and so, but it's going to be really fun. It's going to be really fun. Here's Is this video? Room. Is this him? Yeah. Whoa! Oh wow. no, he's really good. Did he just catch a? That was a good one. Here's what he does. He does that thing. He does that crazy. What was that move? I don't know. This is going by too fast, but I think it's cool that we leave some for when he comes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So he's gonna be he's gonna be here the Thursday night. He's gonna be here the seventeenth, and then the eighteenth at the uh, at the thing. And um, this is insane. <laughs> he started telling me a story today that I said, "You got to wait and and hear it. You got to wait and tell it on the <laughs> the live cast." And he goes, uh, "I don't need to be friends with those people anymore." So yeah, I will tell it. Yeah. It's not a Guy Fieri story. Oh. It's about something he did at the Super Bowl that worked out very differently than he thought it was going to. Well, I'm sure regardless, it's going to be yeah. good. Hey, Lynn. Yeah. Do you still have that uh, Eric Brunt video from the other day? So Eric we... Brunt? we uh The squirrel suits? Oh. Let me pull that up real quick. So we did a thing uh, here in the live cast... Um, the Red Bull, the the it's a s- Frenchman in the jetpack suit that flew with like the French Air Force planes. Do you remember that? Mm-hmm. Yeah, the, the jetpack man. The jetpack man. It was amazing. So uh, Eric Brunt sent this and said, um, "Thought you guys might like this." And it's not a jetpack guy. It's a guy. It's a couple of guys in squirrel suits that you're about to see. Uh, so the beginning of this video, have you seen this, Steve? Yeah, I've seen wow. these guys are nuts. So, so this is in China. Looks this like is in China. Avatar. Is there music? We can have a little music. Right, so this is, this is you know, just setting the scene of where this takes place. Oh, Red Bull, of course. <laughs> right, it's more Red Bull. But involved in stuff like this. it ain't the jetpack, guys. These are these squirrel suits that are like extra big, puffy. Here we go. Yep. They're like sleeping bag suits. These guys have nothing on to protect them. Well, they're wearing helmets, I guess. And then From they like, have a parachute at the end. But, but watch how close they come to the mountains and the foliage. 
This is as close to flying as it gets. This is flying. Look at this. That's Wait, nuts. I'm now remembering Jay Leno in one of these suits in a commercial yesterday. Oh, yeah, the flying jet. Yeah, with Jerry Seinfeld. Yeah, but this Leno. is real. That was Jay Leno doing nothing. This is, that is insane. That is insane. So th 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 these are the guys. GoPro. GoPros. Um, on National Geographic, they did a show about adrenaline, people that are addicted to adrenaline. And this would be it. Um, and oh one, one of the guys, this is what he does. And he's lost, I think, about 50 friends in the past. From doing this? Year or two, yeah. Yeah. Wow. Th these guys are absolutely nuts. Yeah, that's nuts. That's but doesn't that, doesn't that, that, look at this. Is he gonna dive right in there? Oh, he first? goes right by the towers. Look, at, he's just, he's feet away from the. All it takes is a gust of from wind. The, I know, I understand what it takes. I heard a beeper, by the way. I heard a beeper, too. I'm fascinated by this. It's absolutely I, the awesome idea of watch. flying really is very intriguing. And somebody finally figured out pretty much how to do it. I think it's pretty cool. I mean, this is just way beyond anything. Oh, no, puppy. Look at that crazy little puppy. <laughs> this is just anything way beyond uh, those. What are those? Those The glider port guys, yes. right? Right here in San Diego, 10 minutes from here, is a glider port. And, you, I mean, you're just kind of, it's like parachute s stuff. But I think it's a lot, uh, you can direct how you go and turn and updraft and downdraft and all that stuff, which is pretty amazing. But that shit, that shit just blew my mind. On some crazy level, I want to do that. I would never parachute. Parachuting scares me, but when I look at this, hey Sam, you this would makes do that? me go. So I did an engagement sheet by the glider port. So this is like they come right next to the cliff side, right there. Oh, that's cool. So it's it's actually really neat. The guy over there almost gave me a high five. That's how the, the guy. The, that's well, you're that's clearly crazy. tall enough to reach up. Okay, to yeah, but it was so crazy. <laughs> I mean, we're standing on a cliff, and he's like coming in for like a high five. That's amazing. And they've got pretty good directional change and shift with those things, right? Yeah, I mean, it's like, basically, it's just off the cliff side, and they just go left to right along the cliff. Yeah, guys never get stuck on the cliff. Yeah. You, never, you never hear about that in the news. No, yeah. So what are you saying? You wouldn't do this? I need, I need to check my shrimp and stuff. Okay, go back and watch the 60-minute version of that little reality. Why is it so scary? Yeah. I have seen it. I saw that guy's there for a sec. I just got to check this. That's nuts. It's got to be done. All right, I need a couple more minutes here. I'm almost there. You can see that the, the muscles are starting to open just. Like here, look. Like this. See, mate? Look at this. And the shrimp, yeah. some of them have started to turn, but what's, some haven't. What's the deal again with... Uh, muscles? Muscles, if they don't open. Here's the deal. If muscles... Oh, I got no fucking heat going on down here. I turned it way too low. Um... We'll go sit down and we'll talk about muscles. I need uh, four minutes, guys, and then I should be there. Max, did you see? It's not procrastinator. It was prankster. There you go. That's what it was. <laughs> prankster with a Q, which is such a good beer. Here's the thing about muscles. Um, by the way, Max said he think it was the best beer you've ever had. Oh, it was. Do you know where it's from? Uh, yes, it's Belgium style, but brewed in America. Mm. North Coast mm. Brewing. Yeah. Nice. So... Here's the thing about muscles. We'll pretend my hand is a muscle. If you buy muscles in the store and they're open a little bit and you like knock them, boom. If they close up like that, they're fine. Mm. Oh. Um, if they don't close up, they're probably dead. If you cook muscles in heat and at the end of the, the cooking period, they haven't opened, Throw them away, they're dead. They're either going to shut when you knock them, close up, they're going to open up when you cook them. If that, those two things don't happen, get rid of them. So like, technically, you're buying live. You're muscles. buying, yeah. When I bought these today, these were live. Right. Uh, I just have to say, you know, I shop at a Vons near here, uh, and they don't, they didn't have muscles. Mm. I went to the Ralphs near here. The Ralph's near here is basically a seafood market, and this Vons was 
They just got to get it together. They don't have a, they don't have a good seafood thing going on. You think it's just because of the demand, though? Like, no, I don't. I mean, these so? two markets are a mile apart, yeah. and it's not like the people up at the Ralphs are that much more discriminating. And I've said this before: if your supermarket blows and they don't carry things that you want, you have to ask. True. There's an actual form for you to say, "Will you carry this?" And they'll definitely get it. I mean, they might not carry it forever if you're the only person that buys one out of a case of 200 every year. But if it starts to sell, they'll definitely keep it. But they're like, any, they need to know what people want. If you don't tell them, they'll put out the stuff that they think you want. And you don't want that. That's a good tip. I think it's a good tip. So if you don't see something you want in a supermarket, ask for it. If you go to ba- grab a bag of lettuce and it's brown, ask if they have more in the back. The limes are shitty. Don't buy shitty limes. You know where the limes won't be shitty? Where? Fixtures living. Just hang on. Give me a second. I'm trying to see how that all goes together. <laughs> yeah, me too. They do have a bunch of limes, though, in glass bowls that look really They pretty. do. Speaking well, of that's fixtures. that's what I was talking about. I will be at fixtures Friday, this Friday. I talked about this the other day. They're doing a blood drive, mm-hmm. 10 to 3. Fixtures Friday goes off from 1230 to 230. And food will be courtesy of me and Bridget Boucher, their executive chef. She te- emailed you today. You and Bobby Boucher? Me and Bobby Boucher. She sent an email today and she said, here's exactly what she said. Heard you're up to playing on Friday for the blood drive. Any ideas? Want to use recipes from your books? Hope all is well. She's a real chef. She's amazing. I was hoping that she would figure out and do her food and I would just do like one component. <laughs> I wanted to stir fry something. I'd like to do things that have some activity so people could come and watch and I would stir, f- whatever, I don't know. Anyway, Fixtures, a beloved uh, sponsor of the Sam Livecast. I do my classes there. Can I say a good the thing next- to make? Yeah. There? I, you make because- a suggestion? Yeah, it's going to be really hot. It's supposed to be really hot the yeah. rest of the week after this rain. Yeah. You could do gazpacho with a grilled shrimp. That's such a yummy, good-looking oh, thing. Oh, look at you. In that's a nice really good idea. And the grilled shrimp skewered over the I top. i got to check my... That's a really good idea. That could be Thank my you, one job. There you go. Oh, I, I like really it. like that. I really like that. Okay, so now look. Now look at the difference the time has made. Now look at what we've got. Now we've got beautifully cooked shrimp, right? I have the heat down too low. The timing works out if you follow my directions and don't do crazy things like leave the heat way down. <laughs> but now look what we've got. We've got mussels that are, look at this guy right here. See this guy? Look at how open he is. He's like he's waiting to have his tonsils taken out. <laughs> and this guy, the shrimp are cooked beautifully. So here's all you have to do. Get yourself a little bowl or a plate. And we're going to do that. And while it's just finishing, we're going to cut some lemon because paella is uh, traditionally served with a little lemon on the side. It's just a really nice, fresh little squeeze will give you just a beautiful little extra burst of flavor. So we're going to... What's going on? I see one that didn't open. Oh, you do? Let's see. Where? Uh-oh. Get him. Right. Oh, your arm's blocking me. This guy? Yep. This guy. He's done. He's done like dinner. I'll just bury him a little and see if the last minute of cooking does anything for him. And see, this guy's not quite open too, but he's starting to, so we're good. Sounds good. Sounds great, doesn't it? So let me just get in here, Stephen. Let me ask you this. Yeah. So if you order mussels at a restaurant and say like five out of the 15 you get didn't open, yeah. do you ask for more? If they bring you mussels that haven't opened on your plate, that's fucked up. Yeah. They should be, they should be making sure that they're not doing that to you. Right? So we've got, we've got a little shrimp down here. Nicely cooked shrimp. We'll throw a couple of mussels on here. This is fantastic. And look at this. This now looks like somebody spent a crazy ass load of time yeah. making this thing happen. And you serve it like that, and that's all you have to do. They are really cool looking when they're open. They are. But it's, but you know the, 
Muscles are not expensive either. Hmm. You know who does muscles? Uh, every so often is that Costco has that seafood roadshow. They've got beautiful looking muscles and they've got the, the, the huge uh, shrimp or prawns, the lobster tails, that kind of thing. So a little squeeze of lemon, a little drizzle over the top. You could throw a little parsley on top of this if you want a little cilantro or something. But now look at, here's a, here's a bite of some of the rice in one of these shrimp. Can I give you a bite of this? No, no, I'm good. You can have a shrimp? I can have a shrimp. Yeah. No shrimp. rice though. Steve's being super care uber careful. <laughs> and you can have muscle weight. Super uber. So I knocked off most of the rice. Give it a little, a little. It's oh, a little it's hot. gonna be hot. <laughs> oh, you guys nice. How minute. good is that, right? Oh. That's like perfect. And now this guy. Check out this big, beautiful muscle in here. If you don't like muscles, you're not gonna dig any of this, but. Well, that was kind of weird. Not no, you know what that was? <laughs> that was the beard part that I didn't clean off. Ew. You guys know what the beard oh, is? Oh, the beard. Yeah. The filter? No. Mm. Oh, is it, wait, on. can you explain the oyster beard maybe? Yeah, I don't know what that is. When you, look, I didn't clean these guys. I just threw them in. Um, Uh, when you when you buy mussels, sometimes they're some of the mussels have a little see like they're all pretty clean. This part is like it's called the beard, and it's just like sea kelp junk like that mm -hmm. that just sits on the outside, mm -hmm. and some grows inside, right? Wow. And you just have to pull it off. It's a little hard to get off sometimes, but it's like this one doesn't have any. I think this guy's fine. If I had just done this one. Looks yummy, Sam. It would have been, a, it would have been. Mm. And it tastes like the sea. I love that. All right, that's it for us tonight. We've done really well. That is amazing. You need to make that. Go to the website, cookingguy.com. The recipe's right there. It's called Cheater Paella. And like anything on the website, if you just put in one ingredient, everything with that ingredient is a recipe will come up. You could put in shrimp if you don't know how to spell paella. P-A-E-L-L-A, -L -L -A, I think. You can put in the word cheater and it'll come up. Shrimp, cilantro, you got sausage, put in sausage and see what comes up. Mm. Yeah. You get the idea, right? If you have sausage. <laughs> if you have sausage, <laughs> unless you have that sausage. Oh, that add a nice oh, little crunch to it. A nice little crunch, all right. Uh, we're back here Wednesday night. Go to Donovan's, go to Fixers Living, tell them the live cast sent you. See you Wednesday.